Welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. My name is Pastor Lorraine Buffard. I'm the Bishop for the Diocese of Connecticut for the American Ecumenical Catholic Church. I'm wearing something very special this evening. It's uh, in honor of our newly to be president, uh, Barack Obama. This is uh, an outfit that I got in Nigeria. I know he's not from Nigeria, but uh, this is something I purchased way back when I was living in uh, Africa for several years with the Peace Corps. So this is, uh, I hope, to just pay homage to him and uh, hope and we all pray that he will be the light for us in this nation. Uh, so as I uh, finish with that, I'd like to introduce to you my guest, Paul Goble. Hello, Paul. Well, hello. It's nice to meet with you today. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. I've heard some good things about uh, what you're going to be telling us about, which is ethics. Uh, we've never had a show on ethics. But before we begin with that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe how you got into this ethics mm -hmm. situation. <laughs> the, uh, well, my name is Paul Gobel. I live in Middletown, but I grew up in Sinsbury and know this area quite well. Um, I teach art. Uh, I work with the elderly and disabled, and I use art as therapy, um, especially like working with those who are uh, had strokes, brain injuries, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, finding ways uh, to work with the new body, mm -hmm. and um, and I also teach other artists about art. Um, so you are you an artist? You are. Um, an artist I am an artist. Yeah. That's right. I, I do oil paintings and. Mm -hmm showing some of the galleries in the area. And, um, and I, I like studying very much. And how I got interested in social issues, such as ethics, is touched upon in two different uh, ways. Uh, one way is the time that we, we're living in. And we're in a culture of many different groups. Uh, we're going through cultural shifts, as we have seen over the last eight years. Some major shifts have occurred. Mm -hmm. um, there is a theological battle that is transpiring in America today. And the trumpeters of this battle is the religious right. Mm -hmm. And there's a conflict with a, a free nation, a mm -hmm. nation made up of many different beliefs, practices, and ensuring that freedom. And to the contrary of uh, conservative religion, uh, well, that's a conflict. And so I felt those sparks between, between the rubs flying. Mm -hmm. But on the other end, what draws me into it is through the study of art. As I've studied the history of art, I see that the social dynamics of our culture are captured through the art pieces. And it's delightful when we actually start looking at a piece of art through the social uh, prism, looking at that time period and how it's conveyed, instead of worshiping the artist. Of course, museums and galleries mm -hmm. uh, trumpet the, you know, the worth of that artist and you know, helps us mm -hmm. respect that particular artist. But I, I'm drawn to that time period. What fed that artist? Mm. And so, as we know, we've gone through many shifts in art as well as our social identity and reality in our course of our history. Mm -hmm. And, well, ethics is certainly part of our cultural identity, social rules. How, how do you, how do you, um, sep do you separate ethics from morality? Actually, I do. You do, okay. You know why? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to let you tell me. <laughs> when we talk, when we use the uh, linguistics of that term morality, we're really conveying religious law. When mm -hmm. we talk about religious law, we really need to look at what religion is speaking, which religion is talking. Um, let's look, look, look in our culture in the Ten Commandments. Um, day of rest, the Sabbath, that it is commanded that one take the Sabbath off and not work. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Exodus 20 is, is where this is written. 
And, well, if we're dealing with the Jewish religion, then that Sabbath is Saturday. And if we're dealing with the Christian religion, that is Sunday. And if we're going to be fundamentalist about it, then we're sticking to the letter of the law, which includes the penalty for breaking the law, mm -hmm. which is death, by the way, if we're going to be biblical about mm -hmm. this. Well, there's a problem, isn't there, if we're approaching law? Right. And mm -hmm. so it's contention to which religious group. And so there we get into the tangle of morals mm -hmm. in a heterogeneous culture. But if we talk about ethics, mm -hmm. we start talking about the sense of right and wrong what is naturally wired into us, what has evolved. We are a tribal creature. Mm -hmm. And as such, we have a sense of what it means to interact with the others amongst our group. Mm -hmm. That sense is a little different than what is taught through Sunday school. Mm -hmm. It is dealing what is natural and intrinsic. Mm -hmm. Would, would you say that there are some things that are universal with all cultures and religions that would be ethical, uh, uh, an ethical premise? We do deal with the killing of others. That is absolutely something that hits deep into our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so it's, the it's dignity of human life? The dignity of human life. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get into the social reality of a culture, uh, that dignity, that value starts to shift. Mm -hmm. And there's also a difference when we're dealing with our own tribe mm -hmm. versus the other. Why? What's happening? Why do we value human life when it's dealing with somebody who's like ourselves? Mm -hmm. But we tend to disregard it when it's another group, another ethnicity, another nation, another religion, the other. That's ceases, a paradox, isn't it? Ceases to be human. Mm -hmm. Well, well, that's when we have to dehumanize well, uh, what we want to get rid of. It's also, and we can get into uh, some studies on gender and how the, the brain is, is created. <laughs> um, but first, Let's look at how we, as a tribal animal, operate. We want to protect our own, mm -hmm. and we feel defensive, or at worst, offensive towards the other tribe. We're looking for food. We're looking for water. Mm -hmm. We're searching for that power. And we dehumanize so we can do the action to gain that power. Mm -hmm. And we are an old creature. Mm -hmm. Been around a lot more than just 6,000 years, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just instinctive. Um, I was at a restaurant in Rocky Hill one morning at the beginning of the war in Iraq. And a, a local man who I, I recognize and have spoken to and know is respected in that community is talking about the war. And we're sitting at the counter, so it's kind of a conversation that started to open up to those seated. And he uttered, let's just bomb them, referring to the Iraqis. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I felt a little anger surge in me. Mm -hmm. So the three-year-old girl in Baghdad, let's just kill her? Hmm, sounds immoral to me. He's speaking publicly. Mm -hmm. in front of his community, two people who know him, and he didn't have the sensibility, the common sense, to realize that he just dehumanized people. Now, 